Today we are going to start a new chapter about circulatory shock and its treatment. And the first thing we are going to discuss is the uh, what is basically circulatory shock and what are its different types. So basically, uh, circulatory shock is the inadequate blood flow through the body to the extent that the body tissues are damaged because of too little blood flow. So it is basically a decreased blood flow. It is the decreased blood flow. This is the heart. And uh, the heart is basically receiving the deoxygenated blood from the body. It sends this blood to the lungs where it gets oxygenated and here it gets oxygenated and then returned to the heart. Now, after returning to the heart, the oxygenated blood is basically pumped by the heart to the body. Now, if the pumping, if the pumping or the conduction system, either the heart is unable to pump the blood or the circulatory system is unable to take the blood or the body is unable to util utilize the blood. Now, any condition that will lead to inadequate blood flow through the body to such an extent that the body tissues are damaged due to little blood flow or due to little supply of nutrients like oxygen. Now, whenever such a situation occurs, not only the body organs, but the heart muscles itself and even the muscles or the tissues of the blood vessels will get damaged because of the decreased or inadequate uh, blood flow. When there is uh, inadequate blood flow, there is decreased uh, blood flow, it will ultimately lead to decreased oxygen and other nutrients in the body. So they will not, the body tissues will not be able to receive proper amount of nutrients and they will get damaged. Now, circulatory shock may be either due to decreased cardiac output, either the cardiac output is decreased or the cardiac output may be normal. Now, the, the decreased cardiac output, the circulatory shock due to decreased cardiac output may be due to problems in the heart, cardiac abnormalities or it may be due to decreased venous return. It may be either due to the abnormalities in the heart, the heart is basically unable to pump the blood or the heart is able to pump the blood but the, bl the blood that is being pumped is not properly returning back to the heart. So these are the, basically the problems with a decreased cardiac output and they are one type of circulatory shock. The other type of circulatory shock is the one in which the cardiac output is basically normal. But Either the metabolism of the body is so much high, the demand is so much high, the, the demand of the oxygen or the nutrients or the blood is so much high, or the demand is normal and the cardiac output is al also normal, but there is abnormal tissue perfusion. Blood is being taken through blood vessels which are not properly supplying the tissues. So these are the uh, different types of shocks. So first of all, we will basically discuss the, the cardiac output, uh, the, car the, the shock with decreased cardiac output. Now the, the, the circulatory shock uh, in which there is low cardiac output, it may be cardiac or it may be due to decreased venous return. The, the cardiac abnormalities, the cardiac abnormalities or the abnormalities in which the heart is unable to pump enough blood and it leads to shock, that kind of shock is known as cardiogenic shock. That kind of shock is basically known as cardiogenic shock. And the conditions, the conditions which lead to cardiogenic shock or the abnormalities which lead to decreased uh, cardiac output, decreased cardiac output or cardiogenic shock are the first of all or the most common is myocardial infarction. Now a portion of the heart, a portion of the heart muscle gets damaged. Now, the heart is basically pumping the blood to the body, but the heart in itself is a living being and the muscles of the heart, they need oxygen and they need blood in themselves. If the muscle, if the blood vessels that are supplying blood to the muscles of the heart, if they themselves get damaged, if they themselves get damaged, then, then how they are going to fulfill the needs of the body, then how they are going to fulfill the needs of the body. So, Basically, uh, the, the the first and the most common cause, the myocardial infarction, a condition in which a portion of the heart is get is damaged and the heart is unable to pump enough blood to satisfy the needs of the body or to satisfy the needs of other uh, the remaining muscles of the heart. That myocardial infarction is the most common cardiac problem which leads to cardiogenic shock and which is a kind of a type of circulatory shock. Now, second problem is the valve dysfunction. Now, we discussed uh, in our previous lectures in detail that there might be uh, might be a problem with the valve. Now, the, the heart valves are such that they allow blood from one, um, one chamber of the heart to the other but they will not allow movement in the reverse direction if there is a problem in the mitral valve or aortic valve or the tricuspid valve then there may be abnormal circulation there may be abnormal or defective circulation for example blood due to stenosis of the mitral valve blood may not be able to come into from the atria into the ventricle or from the ventricle into the aorta or <clears throat> from the uh, the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery. So valve dis dysfunctions, they also lead to decreased cardiac output and their decreased cardiac output is also a, a problem in the heart in itself. So it also leads to cardiogenic shock. Now, if there is abnormal pumping, abnormal pumping. Now, suppose, for example, the heart in itself can pump properly, but the pumping is not in a rhythm. Suppose, for example, it can pump for a while and then it stops. Then it can pump for a while and then it stops. So if such a condition occurs, the rhythm, there is abnormalities of the rhythm. So they are known as arrhythmias and arrhythmias also most of the time occur due to myocardial infarction, a condition in which the conduction system of the heart gets damaged. So 
myocardial infarction damage to the heart muscles valve dysfunction the abnormalities of the different valves like stenosis regurgitation and then arrhythmias in which the the conduction system of the heart is damaged in which the rhythm the pumping rhythm of the heart is damaged or any toxicity any toxic substances in the body any drugs which leads to decreased pumping of the heart like for example digoxin or any other drug these are the conditions these are the common conditions which leads to decreased cardiac output and the cardiac output is basically due to problem in the heart and that's why this type of decreased cardiac output and this type of circulatory shock is basically considered as cardiogenic shock so the common causes of cardiogenic shock are myocardial infarction valve dysfunction arrhythmias and toxicity now another condition or other examples of conditions which basically lead to decreased cardiac output which basically leads to decreased cardiac output but there is no problem in the heart the heart is normal the heart can pump normal but the rhythm of the heart is normal there is no toxicity but there is decrease of venous return now the cardiac output is decreased because the blood is not properly returning to the heart now this type of decreased venous return can be either due to decreased volume of the blood it could be due to decreased volume of the blood suppose for example due to some trauma or due to some accident there is hemorrhage there is loss of blood so blood will go outside blood will go outside of the system and there will be decreased blood so the tone of the blood vessels will decrease and the proper amount of blood will not be able to return back to the heart now this type of condition is known as hypovolemic shock hypovolemic shock is a condition in which there is decreased venous return of blood towards the heart and in this due to this reason there is decreased cardiac output when the amount of blood returning to the heart is not not normal when the amount of blood that is returning to the heart is less how can the heart pump normally so this is one condition in which there is loss of fluid it can be due to loss of blood or it can be loss of fluid and both of which will lead to basically decreased volume there will be decreased volume of blood or decreased plasma and both will lead to hypovolemic shock now hypovolemic shock is a type of shock in which there is decreased cardiac output now another condition which will lead to decrease venous return is basically decrease vascular tone now the heart can pump normally the heart can pump normally and there is no decrease in the volume of the blood the amount of blood in the system is also normal but the tone of the blood vessels is not normal the tone of the blood vessel is not normal and the blood vessel is blood vessels are dilated if these blood vessels get dilated the blood will start pooling here the blood will start pooling here and this type of shock is basically due to decreased vascular tone now decreased vascular tone can occur due to a lot of condition like uh, for example anaphylaxis or due to septic shock and these kinds of shocks are basically considered considered as distributive shock distributive shock the 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 pumping is normal the blood the amount of blood is normal but it is not properly being distributed and due to which it is not properly returning back to the heart so in turn it basically decreases the venous return and when the venous return decreases ultimately the cardiac output decreases and when the cardiac output decreases circulatory shock occurs but this kind of circulatory shock which is basically due to decrease in cardiac output which in turn is basically due to decrease venous return and it is basically uh, and that decrease venous return is due to decrease tone of the blood vessel due to decrease vascular tone is known as the distributive shock so it is a circulatory shock which is basically due to decrease cardiac output the amount of blood that is pumped by the heart is not normal but they that dec decrease cardiac is in turn due to decrease venous return the amount of blood that is coming back to the heart is not normal or it is low and the amount of blood that is coming back is low or the venous return is less there is decreased venous return uh, because the tone of the blood vessels is not normal there is decreased vascular tone and it is considered as a distributive shock now finally there are a final category of the decreased venous return is due to the obstruction to the blood flow there is obstruction to the blood flow suppose for example a thrombus has occurred here these are basically lungs for example these are lungs and the blood is pumped by the right side of the heart into the lungs and here it gets oxygenated it if for example a, a clot has occurred a clot is formed in the heart on for example right side of the heart and this clot goes into the lungs it obstructs here and embolism occur now this clot can form in the heart or it can it can form here somewhere here and it can come into the heart and it may be pumped into the blood vessels which where it will block the, the the movement or the circulation of blood when the circulation of blood is is stopped then the blood cannot properly go into the lungs and when the pro, and when the blood is not properly being pumped into the lungs further blood there is no space for further blood to come into the heart and the dec there there is decrease in venous return there is decrease in venous return and it also leads to shock which is known as obstructive shock now embolism thromboembolism is one kind of obstructive shock this kind of obstruction can also occur due to tumors or uh, pneumothorax in which some of the blood vessels may be compressed from outside for example these blood vessels may be compressed from outside and the blood will not be able to return back but whatsoever may be the cause of obstruction it will ultimately lead to decreased venous return and when the, the blood is not properly returning to the heart it will ultimately lead to decreased cardiac output and when the cardiac output decreases ultimately shock will occur so obstructive shock 
obstructive shock is a kind of shock in which there is decreased venous return. The decreased venous return is due to obstruction to the flow of blood and it ultimately is a kind of decreased cardiac output shock and it basically uh, is ultimately leads to circulatory shock. So obstruction to the blood flow is also a cause of decreased venous return and a cause of shock. Now finally, these were all conditions in which the cardiac output was low. These these conditions, the myocardial infarction, problem in the valves, arrhythmias, toxicity, the, the decrease in blood volume of plasma volume, the, the tone, the decrease in the tone and the obstruction to the blood flow, all of these conditions basically led to decreased cardiac output and which ultimately led to the circulatory shock. Now some kinds of shock can occur due to normal cardiac output as well. Normal cardiac output. Now normal in normal cardiac output shock, there is inadequate blood supply to the tissue, but the inadequate blood supply to the tissue is not due to problem in the heart and it is also not due to problem in the venous return. The blood is basically returning to the heart and the heart can properly pump the blood and it can be oxygenated as well. But what happens is that the demand of the tissue may be very high. There is increased metabolism. The metabolism, the, the demand of the, the tissues is so much high due to some problems, for example, hyperthyroidism. The demand of the tissues is so much high that the amount of blood the heart is pumping and the, that is returning to the heart is insufficient or is not able to fulfill the, the the demands to fulfill the demands of the tissues because of high metabolism level so this increased metabolism may lead to a kind of shock in which this cardiac output is normal in which the cardiac output is normal but still shock can occur but still the amount of blood that is being pumped and that is circulating in the body will not be sufficient to fulfill the demands of the body because the metabolism their demand is higher than normal now another reason for a shock with normal cardiac, cardiac output could be due to abnormal tissue perfusion abnormal tissue per perfusion some of the conditions like uh, beriberi or av fistula are examples in which the cardiac output can be normal but in which shock will occur now in av fistula what happens is there is a connection between the artery and vein artery and vein now the blood will be directly growing from the artery into the vein and these tissues there will be an abnormal perfusion for example here these tissues they demand oxygen they demand nutrients but the blood is most of the blood through a fistula is being diverted from this artery directly into this vein without properly perfusing this tissue now one example was increased metabolism but the other is abnormal tissue perfusion and av fistula is a very good example in very very in very very abnormal perfusion occurs as well which is basically due to decreased uh, thiamine level or vitamin, uh, decreased vitamin. So these conditions, in these conditions, the, the heart is pumping normal amount of blood. There is no problem in the heart. There is normal blood returning to the heart, but either the demand is very high or the, there is abnormal perfusion. So these are all kinds of uh, shock. These are different types of shocks. Now what happens is that the arterial pressure in the shock may or may not be normal. It is because the, if there is decreased blood supply to the tissues, there are some compensatory mechanisms which will basically lead to normal arterial pressure. There will be problem, there will be a problem, but the compensatory mechanism like the sympathetic system will increase the arterial pressure through compensations. So the arterial pressure in shock may or may not be normal. Sometimes there will be normal arterial pressure. Sometimes there will be normal arterial pressure. Suppose for example in higher metabolism, the circulatory uh, shock will be there, but the arterial pressure may be normal because it is not due to the decrease in the arterial pressure or the blood pressure, but it is due to the high demand. The, 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 the blood or the circulatory system cannot fulfill the demands. Similarly, in abnormal tissue perfusion, there will be normal arterial pressure. But some tip, some some um, some body organs they are not receiving the blood, or the blood is being diverted through a fistula. So same will happen in beriberi, beri in which the blood cannot, the nutrients cannot be utilized at the tissue levels. These conditions may have arterial pressure. They can have normal arterial pressure. So in ar the arterial pressure is not necessarily low in in shock. You have to differentiate this. It's not important. It's not necessary that there will be low arterial pressure because if the arterial pressure may be normal even in the conditions in which there is shock the arterial pressure may be normal because the compensatory mechanisms are there which we are going to discuss in our coming lectures the compensatory mechanisms may keep the arterial pressure normal and still the, the patient the, the person will be in a state of shock and finally shock itself breeds more shock once for example there is a problem there is myocardial infarction there is a defect defective pumping of the heart now due to this defective pumping of the heart there is decreased pumping of the heart when there is decreased pumping of the heart if there is no compensation occurring and the arterial pressure falls sometimes the arterial pressure may be maintained due to compensatory mechanisms like sympathetic system but if they fail to maintain the arterial pressure then there will be decreased return decreased return of blood to the heart there will be decreased venous return when decreased venous return occur there will be still decreased uh, like the, sh the, the pumping of the heart will decrease further when the pumping of the heart decreases further there will be de further decrease in cardiac output and further decrease in cardiac output there will be further decrease in the venous return when further decrease in cardiac uh, venous return occur there will be further decrease in cardiac output so once shock starts it basically leads to a vicious cycle until and unless a compensatory system a compensatory mechanism restores the blood pressure so shock itself breeds more shock means that once a mechanism like the myocardial function or the valvular dysfunction or the arrhythmias occur or the toxicity occurs in which the pumping of the heart decreases then 
this decrease may uh, uh, may, sig- may basically magnify so many times and one problem will breed to another problem and that problem will magnify the original problem or will increase the original problem which will further deteriorate the shock and the shock will basically breed more shock and until death occurs so to summarize this lecture circulatory shock is basically the inadequate blood supply to the tissues it is the inadequate blood supply to the tissues in this uh, condition the cardiac output may be low or the cardiac output may be normal if the cardiac output is low it can either be due to the pumping of the heart or it can be due to decreased venous return decreased or abnormal pumping of the heart can be due to myocardial infarction or problem in the heart valves or problem in the rhythm the heart rhythm the contraction or the air, there can be arrhythmias and there can be toxicity so the problems in at the level of heart can be due to these problems then if the heart pumping is normal but the, the venous return may not be normal the heart may be pumping normal amount of blood but the volume of blood may be decreased as in hypovolemic shock or there will be loss of tone as in distributive shock as in anaphylaxis or uh, septic shock and finally the the the, the volume of the shock, uh, blood may be normal the pumping of the heart uh, may be normal but there will be some obstruction to the flow of blood either in the uh, in the veins or in the lungs so it will basically lead to obstructive shock and then finally the cardiac output may be normal but the demand of the tissue will be so much high that the heart the pumping of the heart in the circulatory system will not be able to maintain this amount of metabolism or there will be abnormal perfusion blood will be perfusing abnormal areas in which there will be no demand and the the, the, the places or the tissues which in which there will be demand they, their demand will be uh, not satisfied so all these conditions basically lead to shock and in some conditions the arterial pressure may be normal and in some condition it may not be normal and once the circulatory shock starts if it is not compensated in the uh, initially then it can it can uh, shock in itself can breed more shock and or it simply means that once a condition occurs it may worsen in, uh, with the passage of time so that's the initial introduction about the shock in the uh, coming lecture we will basically discuss the stages of shock and then we will uh, further discuss different types of shock thanks a lot for watching the video